Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of The Deep Dive. Today I have got um, a magician on that I've known for many years and in fact the product we're going to be speaking about today I believe I purchased from him maybe 20 years ago but we will confirm that a little bit later and it's something I used in my professional work for many years and it was something I used to close at a table and it is phenomenal um so we'll get on to that in a moment but before we do as always if you haven't done so already please subscribe to our youtube channel and hit that notification bell and you will be notified every time we go live right here on youtube and remember harry puts up new videos on our socials every day so make sure you subscribe for your daily dose of magical fun with harry anyway without further ado let's introduce our guest today mr john allen hi john how are you i'm very good thank you how are you very well indeed, mate. Very well indeed. And I think I remember the very first time we met. Do you remember? Oh. Uh, yes, I do. But you tell your version. Okay. I think we were at, um, I think it was the very first J-Day. And you had a dealer stand there. And I even remember what you were deming. Because you were, you only had three oh tricks. You were on the stand next to me. And for one of the tricks, you were saying a poem, which was really annoying me by the end of the day. Right? Because it was the <laughs> same poem. <laughs> so if I remember rightly, now you can correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember rightly, you had Grandpa's Deck by Stephen Tucker or, or John, not John Archer. No, Danny uh, Archer. Grandpa's Deck would have been uh, Danny Archer. Danny Archer, you had Quadro Chick, yeah, and Infinity oh. Deck by John Allen. Oh my word! Yes. yes, am I right? I don't remember the poem. I, I think you would be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't it remember was a the poem. poem. I think I may have just made that up to annoy you. Yeah, it was a poem that you were saying as you were. Was it a poem? I'm sure it was a poem. Something with the grandpa's deck. I'm sure it was. It was a great presentation. But hearing it 500 times. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, but Well, I apologise for that. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, that you, was... <laughs> when was that? What year was that? I mean, that would have been possibly 98, 99, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I, I remember you were killing it with with those tricks the grandpa's deck i remember selling like that the quattro chick you were the only one that i've ever seen do that well i mean that, that oh was... it's i i do it rarely these days but it was just so much fun i always said it, it's just the funniest card trick ever just because it's a, a little marionette chicken and there's something about puppets that adults love, you know, when you're breaking its leg or something like that, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. I probably still do the same routine uh, that I did all those years ago. It, it was a great routine. And like I said, you're the only one that I've ever seen. I haven't seen many people do it, to be fair. But the ones that I have done have, have not done it as well as you. But you, like we said, when you were at a dealer's stand, I mean, you must have done that a hundred times that day alone most magicians yeah. will never perform a trick a hundred times when you're a dealer and you're selling something we, we do them a hundred times a day yeah, yeah. well i i I, re I got really good at that when i i remember doing it at the magic castle so you have all these world-class magicians and this was my first time there i think it was 96 which is the year after i won ibm in the states and i did my uh, did the magic castle and I said, there's all these wonderful magicians and I'm closing my magic castle act with a puppet <laughs> that finds, you know, that finds a, a playing card. It was just weird. So I just remember 27 times in a week. So yeah, yeah. I think repetition and, and you, you know, I think not only do you get, do you get good because you're learning the moves and muscle memory, but for me anyway, I'm always trying to change the, uh, the presentation slightly yeah. just because I get bored, you know, or yeah. something else will pop in my head. And so you try that out. 
And so, yeah, doing it that many times, uh, you'll you'll find the right way to do things. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And and the trick we're here to speak about today as well um, is something Ooh. once again you've done, you know, a thousand times. I mean, I I've done it a few hundred times, <laughs> and you know, so I, I try to think how much you yeah. you've done it. But I believe I purchased this from you at an IBM convention many many years ago and it was for me it it was such a great closer but not only is it a brilliant closer but it gives you that beautiful opening moment as well and i i used to use your line um the the who's the most trustworthy in the group which is just a perfect yeah. line to get started with Really, really. Well, cool. this is the thing. I mean, I, I, first of all, thank you. But also, I mean, I, yeah, for probably for about 15 years, I would pretty much open every table and close every table with this. Uh, not because of the trick itself, but because of the prop. Uh, because as you said, you know, my, my opening line is, is not about, you know, I'm a magician. Uh, can I show you a trick? it's finding out about them yeah. so for me that's that was really important and it, it kind of throws people a little bit but it just lets me find out about people before i just go straight in you know people online will say well, what's a really good opening trick or how do i get people's attention what you know what trick maybe a flash of fire produce a deck of cards it, it's it's just not about that it's, it's about you and them and, and making that connection first and by yeah, by by having having this prop and just asking who the most trustworthy person is, it just opens up so many avenues for for entertainment um, and just engaging with a group of strangers. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I've had all sorts of. I mean, one of one of the one of the most memorable. I did a bar mitzvah, and I'm at the rabbi's table. So it's the chief rabbi, and I say, "Who's the most trustworthy person at the table?" And the rabbi points to somebody else. You know, it's like, <laughs> seriously, what? You know, um, <laughs> and I've had someone, everyone points to someone. This was actually going to be in a trailer, but I, I decided against it. This woman got, she, she had quite a few people point to her, but she didn't put her hand up. So I said, what do you do that you don't think you're trustworthy, but other people do? And she said, police officer. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's just that, that gives me that moment, which I love when I'm performing, where I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And you just go with it, you know. And it, it it makes it it makes it about them, and that's what I think endears the performer to people is when they know that you're doing it for them, not just going through the motions. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And when I think back to to when I used to use it as well, there there was a few things that I really loved about this particular prop um one one of the things when i was growing up whenever i used to watch magicians on tv one of the most magical things i believe that i experienced when watching this was an item to impossible location in my mind that is what i see as real magic and when i perform an effect like that i feel like a, a real magician you know, when I do uh, an item to an impossible location, I feel that's almost the pinnacle in my mind of what magic is. Something here vanishes and appears somewhere else. The thing that I really loved about um, the destination box and, and still love about it is for one, the quality of the prop made me feel proud to put it on the table. Um, that to me was a big standout thing because usually as close-up magicians we're using a deck of cards we got a pen we got some elastic bands this looked like it was worth some money it was a beautiful piece of furniture goes on the table and it's it's there the other thing that i really loved about it is it's a hundred percent examinable so you there, there's no question in their mind that this is a solid locked box that has been sat on the table. And whenever I could, I would do exactly the same as you, hand it to someone and make sure they held it till the very end. Now, as, as far as routines go, 
from an audience point of view, how impossible is this? An object, uh, uh, an item's given out, a box is given out, an object is borrowed, signed, vanished, and it appears in the box that they're, they've been holding all the time. I mean, that is just so magical, but I can't take away from the quality of that box. Yeah. That made um, me feel proud to perform it. I mean, it, it's one of the things that I wanted with the original is uh, not just to mass produce a cheap, you know, a cheap quality item just to, so that as many people as possible can, can perform it. I wanted this to be a quality item. So as you say, when you, when you show it, um, people go, oh, you know, what is that, you know? Um, and so, yeah, the, the, there, is the, there is the quality, there's the intrigue with it. Uh, I mean, I can show the box. Are we, are we showing the box ahead of time? Yeah, yeah, you can show the box and then we'll play the okay. trailer in a moment. There you go. So this is the destination box. I mean, it, it, is, it is larger than every other box for a reason. But as you said, it, it's padlocked, it's got brass, brass hinge and uh, brass hinges, has been staple, and it, you know when you when you bring this out and I say I need to know who is the most trustworthy person sitting at this table, you know, and I, I and I, I hand it to people like this as though it, it it's got value to it. I don't just go here you go take hold of that. Yeah. So everything about it is quality. You are you are not going to just bring this out at a pub with your mates. It's not for that. Yeah. But I would do this not just at tables, but at walk around as well. But it, again, it would always be a case of this is there's something important about this. Look after this. As you said, the fact that this is padlocked means people are not going to get into it. If you have a rubber band around a box with a lid or, you know, um, just any, if it can be opened, people at some point, someone is going to open it and maybe ruin the effect. Yeah. But the fact that this is padlocked and the fact that I've given it out to somebody, it makes it, as you said, it's a it's an item, mainly a playing card, but it's an object to impossible location. Yeah. I think it's important to, to point out to people there's a difference between, uh, let's say, a card to impossible location and a card to improbable location. Yeah. So even if you have a wallet that's in your pocket, that's not impossible because... You're taking, you know, it's on you, it's hidden. It's improbable that it's in there, but it, it's not impossible. But if I've given out a locked box to somebody else and then I take it back and it's all fair and above board, that, as you've said, that just makes it absolutely impossible. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, uh, the, the other thing that I was very pleased about, because I remember when I purchased mine off you, they were very hard to get hold of because I, I, if I, if my memory serves me correct, I tried to get one. You didn't have any, and I believe I finally got one from you at an IBM convention. I don't know if you had a dealer stand there or we were chatting, and I said, "Look, I'm after one," and you said, "I'm having a few more made because you used yeah. to get them made in very small batches." I know we discussed this yeah. before we we went. Like they were very hard to, to get made and very expensive to get made. Yeah, I mean they were they were expensive to make. They were handmade. I, I found <laughs> someone who did wood turning and, and was able to um, you know make the box. Oh, so, you know, it's it's gimmicked slightly. Yeah. So it's not just a case of you just need a box. So it, there is a slight uh, gimmicking to it. So it, it did need a little bit of work. But again, I just wanted it to be high quality and I wasn't wholesaling as much back then. Um, and so, yeah, I think they cost, you know, they, they cost about 40, 50 pounds each to make. Yeah. So, you know, I, ju I just wanted, I just wanted it to be high quality, uh, uh, you know, just a, a high quality item. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, and that was, that was way back then. Yeah. And it, it really, it did please me when I heard it was coming back out, it pleased me to see that the quality was still there because there was part of me, even though I know you and I wouldn't, I, I know 100% you wouldn't cut corners. 
But you do sort of, when you hear, oh, something's now gone into mass manufacture, there is a point of view that goes, please don't let it be plastic. Please, because a lot yeah, of people yeah. do go down that route. They bring out this beautiful prop, it's 500 pounds, and they go, we've now made it uh, made it available to everyone. It's only 60 pounds, and it's made of plastic, and it's stuck together with sellotape. But to see this, I mean, yeah. I've still got my original, which is one of my prized possessions it it still looks immaculate it's a beautifully made prop um and i love it. It, it i do and i was so pleased when i saw it was coming back out that it was still great quality and made of wood and as it should be rather than you know we'll go and get it injection molded somehow and everything else you know yeah because yeah and, and and the thing is i've, I've actually kept it at the same price yeah, uh, even after twenty years, so it, you know it should have been double the price anyway, with inflation. But uh, but yeah, as I say, for, for me, it's it. Uh, there's there's some things which you do. Yeah, it doesn't matter so much if it's mass produced, but if you know, there's certain things that you do want quality. Yeah. Uh, so it, for, for me, it, as I said, it, it's not something for for everybody. You know, as I said, you're not going to go down the pub and just take it out and go, oh, let me just show you a quick trick. You know, this is for the the, the worker, whether it's, you know, the, the old corporate events or whether you're doing social events, weddings, whatever. It's, you know, it's for people who do gigs. Uh, yeah. And it, it can be for anybody. I mean, I've done it for kids. Uh, I've done it, you know, obviously for adults, mixture of both people sitting down, people standing up. And it's... It, it's more, this is one of these things, and this is what I actually go into in the instructions, which are completely uh, different to the original because I've got 20 years of experience with it. Yeah, It's not just about the prop. And I know, you know um, you don't get this very much with the props because it, it's all about the trick. Everything is about, here's the trick, here's the method, a couple of, couple of subtleties, but it's about the trick. With the destination box, it's more, I, I spent a lot of time actually talking about how you use the prop. So as, as we said before, I could just go, I'm just gonna leave this on the table. Now let me do a trick. But I don't, I use this box to find out about the audience. You know, who are the people that are going to stick their head above the parapet and maybe be a bit of fun? Who, who wants to shy away? What do people do for a living, which I, you know, it's great to find that out in case you can use it. So for me, a lot of a lot of the what I love about the destination box is yes, it's a car to impossible location, but it, it allows me to do so much more as, as a performer and as a you know as a close up magician or even a parlor magician. Yeah. That for me is is just what's what's so important about it. Yeah. And the, the other thing I want to say as well, I've used the destination box quite a few times, actually, just when we've had guests coming around for dinner, we've had a dinner party or whatever it is, and I've had this in the front room, just on the side on one of the shelves, and at some point during the evening, go to it, or even at the dinner table. I remember once we, Jenny loves murder mystery evenings, and we held one, and right in the middle of the table, I just had an upturned wine glass with this box sitting on it, and then that was revealed at yeah. the end, and it, it was great. And the other thing that I've used the box for, I've only used it for it about three times, but for a headline prediction where I've actually sent the box to my client a week before the lock box, and I said to her, "There's a package coming to you. Please do not open the package, but bring it along." So now, during that evening, yeah. um, I get them to open the package and I say, the package's been with you all the time. Yeah, I haven't touched it. There's something inside. There's a box. Can you open it? Oh, no, it's locked. Oh, I've got the keys here. Look, open the lock. And then, you know, go into the headline prediction. And it's a killer. It's a killer for that. It really is. Um, it, it's it's, such it's the impossibility of it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I know that uh, Keith Barry... Uh, there's a video on YouTube, uh, Keith Barry doing it for a, a radio show where he's done a headline prediction. I mean, it's multi-layered, but he's used the destination box for a, for a headline prediction. 
And that's the thing is it's not just a card to box. Uh, I mean, in, you know, in, inside there is, there's two items and the card will be in, in one of them. But literally anything that can fit inside that second item can be produced. So it could be a banknote, it could be a fingering, as you said, it could be a, a, a headline prediction, a piece of paper, it could be a necklace, anything, anything that fits inside. Uh, and also, I've changed what goes into it. I remember yeah. doing a restaurant and I'd done the signed card it was all set. And then the guy gave me a tip. I said, oh, that would be really nice. Could you just sign it for me? And the note that he signed ended up inside the destination box instead yeah. of the playing card. So you can even change what goes in there mid-performance if you think, oh, maybe something's just happened and it would be it would be a, a stronger effect maybe or more personal. Yeah. Uh, I've gone up to a table and I was told it was a birthday, but it was actually a double birthday. So I had two playing cards signed and two playing cards ended up inside. Nice. So it, it is the versatility of it. Uh, yeah. And the fact that it is actually the playing card itself or the person's ring, there's no, there's no switching of the card afterwards. I have a thing that for, for me, I know some people go the other way, but I like, I like to be really, really fair after I've been really, really sneaky. So by the time we get to reveal the playing card, all the sneaky work has been done and I can just play this up for as much as I can, how fair this is. And in fact, the destination box was, I think it was the first card to box where the person could take the card out of the box. Yeah. I've sort of gone against that a little bit just because of the theatrics and not relying on someone else for the big reveal. But if they, if you want to, they can take the card out of the item that's in the destination box, and it's as yeah. it, it's as fair as that. And it's, it's I just I just I just love the way not not you know the effect is great. It's a card to impossible location. How many of those are there? I I don't know. At least three. But it, it so it's not a card to impossible location that gets me excited with this. It's everything around it, and and yeah, yeah I, I, I still to this day. Yeah. Well, I, I used to, it's funny you should say the, the note thing because that's how I used to perform it 95% of the time. I used to hand the box out at the beginning, um, then do a bill switch, but I would always switch down. So I'd ask for a large note, switch down to a fiver, um, and then I could use that as a running gag for our, oh, I haven't forgot, I owe you a uh, 10 pound or whatever where they've lent me a 50 or whatever it might be so i use that as a running gag then at the end of the uh, performance it ends up in this um, box the other thing that you mentioned there that i want to point out just before we say the trailer and that was a really good point yeah is you can switch what's going in that box at any point in your act so you can hand the box out the box can be on the table and in your mind you're going, okay, I'm going to do the, the card to box or the note to box. And then you realize someone's got a lovely wedding ring on or a, a lovely ring or they've got this or they've got that. And then you can go, do you know what? That's going to appear in the box. And that's what will appear in there. So you can actually adapt this yeah. on the fly and even halfway through a routine. Until that box is opened, anything can go in there. Yeah. I mean, we, we, magicians are usually told, and mentalists, uh, always have an out, you know, have a brainwave deck on you just in case something else happens. So having the destination box is almost like having an out. Yeah. And I remember only once a, a ring was going to appear somewhere and I wasn't able to produce it from where I wanted to produce it. So the destination box came to my rescue and there was a playing card and a finger ring inside there and it was yeah. just as amazing as you know the, the trick that they never they never got to see so yeah you can you can you can use it as an out you can use it as a well let's see what happens i'm, I'm going to be yeah. doing you know as you said i'm going to do the card trick but maybe something else would be a bit better than just having the sign playing card as you said if there's a a, a fingering or or the, or the bank note um yeah. and actually i just wanted to mention you you said about doing a, a uh uh, headline prediction. Uh, Mark D'Souza, who's a, a really good friend of mine, yeah, he, we, we were discussing it years ago. 
he actually came up with a, a way to have the, the headline prediction or the piece of paper signed or initialed by the person before the show. So you go to their office, wherever, they sign the piece of paper, it goes inside, they look after it, and on the night, you come, you know, bring it, bring it up, and your headline prediction is written on their signed piece of paper or their initial piece of paper, Very so that nice. they know well that couldn't have been switched. So, which is a really, really nice, little, nice little touch. So, yeah. so there's there's just so so much that can be done with it, uh, and so many variations as well. Even a watch steel. I don't know if do you do a watch steel. Uh, I do. Yeah, takes me about an hour. Because uh, if they're prepared to sit there. I'll oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> the Max Malini watch steel. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I, I used to do a watch steel. Uh, I probably was a bit quicker than you at about 45, 50 minutes. <laughs> but I would, I would have the items in the box. And I say, thank you. Sorry. Um, so I would, yeah, I'd have the, I'd have the two items in there reveal the card and I'd say, um, did any, I said there were two items. Did anybody see the third one? And you get people going, no. And I would open up the box and inside was a watch. And I, and then oh, the person okay. would realize it's theirs and they'd look. And so I would use it as sort of a magical way to produce someone's watch from inside the box, which also subtly shows people it's a perfectly ordinary box. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually look at talking about going back to something you said near the start about having it examined. I don't go at the end and you can examine the box. No. I know a lot of magicians want everything to be examinable at the end and here you can do it. I think the thing is, is that the fact that you can hand it out, they can look all around it if they want to. It, there, there's, there's nothing to find. That That's no. the thing. So no. it's not a case of, after you produce the card and look, look, there's no way into the box. You can check it out yourself. That that's not the way to do it. No, the, 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 the reactions the to that, that signed card. Be... Go on. Sorry. After you. Okay. Uh, no, after I was me. Gonna... No, yeah. I was just going to say that. The... <laughs> no, no, me. <laughs> um, we'll edit that out. So no, the, the the fact that someone's been looking after it, and the fact that I'm so clean and fair. When I open up the card, people just know that there's there's, there's no point in asking to see the box or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah, go. Well, <clears throat> I was going to say as well. The other thing that's really nice about this um, this routine, whatever routine you're going to do, the movements you use or the the, the choreo uh, choreography of opening the box, um, tipping everything out, is just perfect like there's literally nothing to see and it's you don't have to learn any hard moves or any you don't have to use serious misdirection because everything you do when you open that box is 100 percent justified 100 percent innocent looking and the the way you've choreographed the whole thing and we wouldn't expect anything less from you you know but it is perfect. It's if you just follow your instructions, you're going to do this and blow people away. It, it's so easy to do, and for that, um, for this level of effect to be this easy to perform, I think is great because you can just concentrate on having fun with your audience, you know, rather than having to worry about moves. Yeah. I think we're getting to the point where we need to show this trailer. <laughs> I was just going to, I, I was just going to uh, 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 reply to, to the points you made just before yeah. we see the trailer. Uh, keep, keep people on edge. It, no, the, for me, it's never been about difficult sleight of hand. I mean, there, there's always a move or something, but I also think with destination boxes, with a, a lot of magic, people just want the props to do the work. You press a button or you just touch something or you do, and, and the prop does everything. It switches it for you. It changes it for you. It cleans up for you, everything. But then you're ignoring all the other elements that go into 
performing magic. So this has timed misdirection. This has there is a there is a slight uh, there's a one ahead principle, um, and so all of these go together. Uh, and there's also sort of misdirection as well, just mental misdirection for for me. Yeah. So it's all these that when you add them together, that's what helps to make it so powerful. You know, it's not just, well, as long as you've got the box, you don't need to do any skill. You don't need to know anything about magic principles. I mean, obviously I, I teach them and they're, they're, they're basic. I wouldn't say they're yeah. simple, they're basic, but when you put them all together, time misdirection, one ahead, um, visual misdirection as well, that's that's what uh, that's what makes the destination box so good. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. So I tell you what, let's take a look at the trailer, and then we'll come back and wrap this all up. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the trailer of the fantastic destination box by John Allen. I don't think you're going to like this. I think you're going to love this. Hi, I'm John Allen, and this is Destination Box. Since Bruno Hennig first created the Carter Box effect, it has become a classic of magic. There have been many versions, but there's never been one like Destination Box. I've been using Destination Box for over two decades. Every group at every event would experience a fun and engaging start to my performance. Who is the most trustworthy person sitting around this table? You're getting quite a lot of votes there. Never trust anyone who puts their hand on that equation. <laughs> Leading to an impossible finale. A folded card. I'm not going to look, I'll only know by your reactions, and especially yours, Courtney. All that performance experience is offered to you in the video tutorial, so you can also deliver one of the strongest effects in close-up magic. A card is selected and signed, followed by whichever card routine you like. You take the box back, and this is what happens. There's a mystery bag or a mysterious oh. silver box. Which one of these shall mystery I use? Bag. The mystery bag. The mystery bag? Yeah. I will use the bag to tap the box because inside the box, I think I got I think I got away with that. There is no way, there is just no way. No, no. There is no, just no, no, no way. No, no, no. I'm gonna do this as no fairly way. as I possibly can. No way. I don't think you're going to like this. I think you're going to love this. <laughs> Are you joking? I've been getting jaw-dropping and speechless reactions with this for over 20 years. Destination Box is unique amongst all Carter boxes. It is securely padlocked. It is 100% examinable. There are no limitations on the style of playing card used. The person who signed the card can even remove it themselves. You can change the item to be found during your performance. It is a feature item for close-up, parlor, or stage. Destination Box is more than just a magic prop. It is a high-quality, carefully crafted, bespoke item that helps you engage with your audience, create rapport, and set up your performance. While many magicians use it for card to box, it offers so much versatility. Ring to box, signed bill to box, headline prediction, brainwave prediction, and even a watch steal finale. If you want to perform the strongest, most incredible card to box possible, and so much more, you need Destination Box.
and there it is the destination box Absolutely wow I, even i want to buy one after that <laughs> honestly mate it's so yeah. good but before we wrap up today um i want to mention as well for oh. anyone that likes the destination box or loves the idea and they're going oh, I've got to fold a card you have got the answer yep and do you want yes, to talk about that a little bit um, yeah I'll, I'll quickly do so there's, there's no secret that it ends up folded so you do a mercury card fold and uh, what, actually one of the differences between this and the original is this one is the regular Mercury card fold. The original was made like a, a one-handed. So, yeah, the, 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 original Merc well, the, the, the original Mercury card fold is you have to pull the card back, fold it, and then fold it, uh, uh, flatten it against the deck. So there's, let's, there's like three actions. So it, it's one, and it's round the thumb, and then, you know, it, it's not bad, but it, it's, it's quite difficult. So I created a, a template, Tommy Wonder, uh, who actually gave me a quote for the original um, Destination Box. He, I think, I believe he was the first person to have the idea to score cards. But what, I, what I've introduced is a, is a template. So uh, we have this here. So this is a template where you will put the card in and you use a scoring tool and some uh, what I call spacers to score the exact middle down here and down here. So because I've weakened the card, uh, I get to do this in one action. Mm. So, so good. it literally changes, not, not just makes it easier uh, or, or a better card fold, but I've changed the, the way that you do a Mercury card fold. And it's, it's like one anyone action. That, yeah, anyone that does a Mercury card fold, uh, especially when I do it, the card's always a bit skew whiff and it's never a perfect little fold. And Whereas the perfect score, yeah. um, you are getting that perfect fold. And I just want to sort of say as well, you get everything with the perfect score. So you literally just put the card in that frame and you provide the spaces and you've got the scoring tool and you can score cards in yeah. a matter of, seconds really you could do a whole deck in a in a few minutes i've, I've done a deck of cards a full deck of cards in 11 minutes yeah so uh i know people people have said to me but then if, if, if this card's the scored one you've got to force that card and i go yes forcing yeah. the card will probably be the easiest thing you do in the whole of your card routine yeah. so for me to force a card that is the scored one, that, that's no big deal at all, really. No. So it just look because if you're doing the absolute impossible of getting a, a, a playing card into a box that's locked that someone's holding, and you know, you, you have a, a card that looks a bit like this, it, it's you know, it, it it's not a good finale when you can when you can have something that's perfectly folded. So for me, you know, using using perfect score for something like this, again, it just adds to the the image of you as a as a as a performer. So uh, yeah, it, it's all it's all really really simple to do. Yeah, it really is. So John, it just leaves me now to say thank you so much for joining us on the deep dive. It was great to catch up with you and. Um, to hear a little bit more about this fantastic prop. I mean, I know it inside out. I've been using it for, for many, many years. And I would urge everyone who's interested in this sort of effect to make the investment. There, there's no shying away from it. It is an investment, but it will pay you back tenfold. It's such a beautiful piece of kit. Yeah. It's a beautiful prop. And you haven't cut any corners. Thank you. It's, it's absolutely lovely. No, and I, and I should also point out, as people will see in the trailer, none of none of those performances were staged. I haven't brought people in. We're shooting. We're shooting a trailer. Can I? Can you? You know? Can I do a trick on you? They were all at events where I've been paid to actually perform, and those were the genuine reactions of people. Even the woman who was, you know, gobsmacked 
jaw jaw dropping. Those you know that that's from that's from events. That's that's not just staged for the, uh, for, the for the trailer. So you know it is the sort of thing. You know I've I've been doing this for over twenty years, um, and and you get all of that experience. You know when when you actually buy the destination box and yeah. giving it to you for free. Yeah. 100%. John, thank you so much for joining us, mate. And, My pleasure. Uh, Thanks a lot, Peter. Hopefully, we'll see you again in the future on another deep dive. So, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Absolutely. John, John Allen. Thank you, John. Thanks a lot. Oh, oh, please, stay sitting. <laughs> so, guys, that's it for this week's Deep Dive. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to join me uh, next week as well. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll be notified every single time we go live right here on our YouTube channel. So until next week, I'm Peter Nardi. Have yourselves a great week. Thank <laughs> you.